In the last video, we saw that if you have a recursive function like sum, in which the recursive call is not in tail position, like this case, then as that function proceeds through the data, it builds up pending context of evaluation to do later. And we talked about how if you operate on large data, that can be expensive in terms of using up a very special part of the computer's memory. If you're operating on small lists, lists 5, 10, 20, 100, it really doesn't matter. But on big data structures, we don't want to have this behavior. So now, we're going to see how to fix that problem. And it turns out you can do it with an accumulator. So let me just very quickly get rid of this. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll move it farther down. And I'm going to redo this function. And now let me do the template, define sum LON. And first we template according to list of. Now we put an outer function around that, wrapping this function in a local, and there has to be a trampoline. Adjust the indentation. Let's see, that looks pretty good. And now we're going to add an accumulator, ACC. Let's see, there it goes there, it goes there, it goes there. We need a second argument here, dot, 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 ACC, and we need something there. So now I'm set up to code some using an accumulator. But we know we want this version of sum to be tail recursive. What that means is that this recursive call right here can't have any of this stuff around it. That stuff can't be there. So let me just comment it out so it's clear that it was there in the template, but we're not going to use it here. I'll get rid of a paren there. Now, if this stuff can't be here, if we go back and look at the original version of sum, it, it kind of means this stuff can't be here. We can't have the addition waiting for sum to return. So somehow what we need to find a way to do is to move this plus first lon into the accumulator argument, because it can't be around the call to sum. It needs to be in the accumulator argument. What would that mean? Well, let's just work on our examples. If the top level call, I'll use 245 because that's the one we have up top. If the top level call is 245, then the first call to the inner function is going to be an accumulator with something. And then, as, as always, I'm just going to work out these examples a little bit. So let's think, if the plus isn't going to happen on the way back out as you return, then that means that by the time you get to the end of this list, by the time you call sum on empty, you need to know the answer. You need to know the answer because the pluses aren't going to happen in the returns, the pluses are going to happen on the way in. That's what's going to happen when we move that plus first lawn into the accumulator. So that kind of means that this the value of the accumulator in that call has to be 11. It has to be 2 plus 4 plus 5. It has to be the total answer. If the value of the accumulator on this call is 11, then the value of the accumulator on this call better be what? Well, 5 less than 11. So the value of the accumulator here has got to be 6. And the value of the accumulator here has to be 4 less than 6, 2. And the value of the accumulator here has to be 0. So the accumulator is going to be a number. And what's it going to be? Well, it's 
the sum of the elements seen so far. It's the sum of every number in ln 0 that we've passed so far. And now we can finish it up. It starts out at 0. Each time, what do you do to the accumulator? Well, each time what you do to the accumulator is you add the current first to it. And when you get to the empty list at the end, you just produce the accumulator. Let's compare these two versions of the functions. Let's look at the templates first. On the original sum, there is the template for structural recursion on list of number, and there it is in the new version of sum. And here's in the new version of sum the template for the accumulator, and here is the details filled in. And what you can see is that both functions have the structural recursion template, only one function has the accumulator, and then with regard to the details, both functions have exactly the same details, but they're in a different place. They're in a different place. So in the original version, the sum of an empty list, which is zero, sits here in the base case. In the new version, the sum of an empty list, which is zero, sits as the initial value of the accumulator. In the original version, plus first of lawn is around the recursive call that says go get the result of adding up the rest of the list and then we'll add first to it. In the new version, plus first of lawn sits in the accumulator position. It says add this number to the result so far and keep going. So that's what happens anytime you use an accumulator to make a function tail recursive is all the same elements are there, but they move around a little bit. Let's just confirm that this, in fact, makes a difference. Let's first test it to make sure it works. It does. Now let's confirm that it, in fact, makes a difference. So now I'm going to step it. Put this up here where we can see a bit better. There's the top level call to sum. So that's to the outer definition of sum. There is the first call to the inner sum. The accumulated value is zero, and we have the whole list. There's the second call to the inner sum. In other words, the first recursive call. We have less of the list. The accumulator is now one. There's the next recursive call. Notice that no context is building up here. There's no call to some zero wrapped around the way there was in the old case. Here, what I'll do is I'll set down what the old case looked like as it built up. And you can see it was building up context, and this isn't, because it's tail recursive. So the basic idea of making a function tail recursive using an accumulator is you template according to the accumulator. You delete the part of the template that wraps the recursive call, because there can't be anything there and you do what might have been around the recursive call as the new argument to the accumulator instead. So instead of adding up on the way back out, you add up on the way in. So what you should do now is work through a couple of the practice problems. The simplest one is product, which multiplies all the numbers in a list. I would suggest taking the trouble to do that, even though it's quite simple just to make sure you've worked through the mechanism of how to do this. And then there's some other problems, like average. Average is an in interesting one. What you'll see is you need to use two accumulators, which we haven't done before, to make this function tail recursive. So don't do that until after you've done product.